If you've taken Calc 2, you can probably figure out that this series, the alternating harmonic series, is convergent. Well, conditionally convergent. If you use the alternating series test, you see that this limit goes to zero and the terms of the sequence are decreasing, thus this series should converge. But what I think is more interesting is what it actually converges to. Ln of 2, that is. Let's start with this sum. You might call it a finite geometric series with n terms. To figure out what this is supposed to be, we'll just call it s. If we multiplied s by x, it would bump the powers of x's by 1. Here's a nice little trick that happens sometimes. Shift all of these terms over by 1, and then subtract these two sums. On the left, we'll get s minus xs, and on the right, all of those middle terms cancel out, we're just left with the one and the last term. Factor out the s on the left, divide by x minus one, and we have the well-known result for the sum of a finite geometric series. Let's treat this result like a function. Right now it's composed with x, but let's plug in negative x to get this result. Let's split up this fraction and subtract the one over one plus x to the other side. I hope you're ready for some calculus because we are going to take the definite integral of both sides of this equation from 0 to 1. One small thing to note is that we can pull this sum out of the integral with basically no justification since it's a finite sum. This might be a little clunky, but let's just keep in mind the differential here is dx, so any letters other than x are constant with respect to that variable. For example, the antiderivative of x to the k dx, that would be x to the k plus 1 over k plus 1, and then we evaluate x from 0 to 1. You could use a u substitution for this integral, but I think it's easier to just see that if we took the derivative of natural log of x plus 1, it would give us 1 over x plus 1, and so this integral becomes natural log absolute value of x plus 1 from 0 to 1. And this integral, we'll just leave alone for now. Here's the fun part. We have this equality, which means the same thing as the absolute value of the left equals the absolute value of the right. Since we're talking about absolute values, we don't need that negative 1 to the n any longer, and absolute values are always greater than or equal to 0. Here's the advantage of not computing that integral. The absolute value of the integral is less than or equal to the integral of the absolute value. This is sort of like the triangle inequality. And since we're integrating between 0 and 1, that denominator, x plus 1, is always going to be larger than 1. So if we just removed it, if we compared it to the definite integral without that denominator, this inequality is always true. Essentially, we're just dividing by less, so the quantity should be bigger. And this integral we can compute. Just add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, substitute in 1 minus substitute in 0, and we get the quantity 1 over n plus 1. Let's collect our thoughts. We have 0 less than or equal to the absolute value of this finite sum minus natural log 2, which is also less than 1 over n plus 1. Now, this is a finite sum, and we were interested in an infinite sum at the start of this video. So let's create it by taking the limit across this inequality. The limit of 0 is 0, the limit of the index of this sum goes off to infinity, creating the alternating harmonic series, and the limit of 1 over n plus 1, that goes to 0. And so we have the squeeze theorem. If the middle part is simultaneously greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 0, it must be 0. Add natural log 2 to both sides, and there you have it. The sum of the alternating harmonic series is natural log 2. If you like infinite series where you can actually compute the sum, you should click the video on the screen. I'll sum you in that one.